Amen. All right. And you don't have to go buy nothing. Get your husband's jacket. See, y'all don't know how to so make to wear my clothes. She wears stuff with tags. She takes tags off of my stuff and puts it on. And I can't do nothing about it because we won. And then she, then she try to put stuff on with tags and tuck the tag. Then hang it back up. When I get it, it smells like it. Look, she got something now. This is a dirty shit. And I was going to rock that too. Man, I was going to rock that. Oh, this girl right here. <laughs> this girl right here. <laughs> I'm sitting up there explaining it, and she just got a full example right there. Oh, I did that today. And then when I put it on, it's going to smell like her. Lipstick stains on it. Just, <laughs> Lord. But anyway, amen. So you can, you can just makeshift this. Amen. So don't be trying. Don't think when they give these colors and stuff that mean, uh, honey, where the, where the car at? No, no. You go find this stuff. This stuff they talking about. And if you don't have it in your house, half off half got it. <laughs> amen. Half off half now. It may have a stab hole in the left shoulder. <laughs> a bullet hole in the back. That's why it's discounted. <laughs> Adamandbeliever.com forward slash overcome 2021. Part one. Oh, this is a series. Amen. So we're going to get you. Look at somebody and say, I will overcome. 2021. Not overcome in 2021. We're going to overcome 2021. No matter what the devil brings this year. Look at somebody and say, I will overcome. Amen. And so we're going to take this part by part, piece by piece, and deal with all the various things that we need to overcome in this coming year so that we can see Jesus when he cracks the sky. Yeah. Amen? Amen. I wish I could tell you that things are going to get better. There's no way I can tell you that when I know what the agenda of the New World Order is. Amen? I've been saying it since part one. We got 13 parts to the truth behind hip-hop. God was revealing everything that was going to happen through that series, wasn't he? If you revert back to those videos, you'd be like, oh, he said that. Am I telling the truth? Every one of them dealt with a, some kind of plot or scheme that the, that the New World Order or that the Illuminati or that the elite had for, what, for this time that we're in right now. Amen? I wasn't surprised when they showed the Bill Gates and the vaccine and all that because I talked about that in Era Man. And I told y'all they were going to use population control and kill off a part of this population. I told y'all they got a vaccine for different demographics. So everybody's not taking the same thing. Amen. And you're going to start seeing folks die. Because they are trying to kill off a certain portion of this population with this inconsistent COVID Junk, income, oh, so inconsistent with it. Amen. Amen. If the masks work, then why we social distance? If social distancing work, why we wearing a mask? Amen. It's just, it, it, but that's what they want. They, it's to dumb us down to where we have to go along with them even though they're going against logic. Y'all yeah. know this has happened before. Yeah. Not in America. It happened in Russia during the Cold War. It happened. That's how the, uh, the Communist Party rose to power because they made the people believe lies and the people had to accept lies or be shot and killed. So they started faking like they believed it, even the ones that didn't, and because they fake so long, they begin to believe it. 
And so for 40 years, they literally had all of the people under a hypnotic spell where they believed whatever they told them. And they're doing that right now. They will put a man in front of you and tell you that that man is a woman because he says he is. And you have to agree with that. Think about it. It's the same thing. They are doing the same conditioning. I said something in the old building. I said, I never believe one person could come to power and rule the whole world. I take that back. Because I wasn't thinking of how if, if, if every society is turned into a communist society or a dictatorship or a, total, a totalitarian government, then that means one person can rule the whole thing. All he got to do is make people believe a lie. And they're practicing right now with COVID. Making you believe is so deadly. Now they got a new strand. A new strand. And the, oh, you should see the headlines. New strand. Way more contagious than the first strand. But it's not any more dangerous. So the first one is a point zero 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 one death rate, less than the seasonal flu, killing less people than the seasonal flu. This one is more contagious, but it's not more deadly. Y'all, and they, they want you to believe that. Well, anyway, praise God for truth. Yeah. Amen. Boy, if it was that deadly, I'd come in here, there'd be five people, five people in here. Because we've been running 500 deep all through the pandemic. No masks, no social distancing, and ain't lost nobody. This looked like Walmart. They be in Walmart like this. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash 2021 part one dot PDF. You know, I'm not just, I'm not believing everything folk tell me. Especially not the government. Because I done seen what they about. I can look on the shelves in the grocery store and tell what they about. Y'all done put soy and high fructose corn syrup and everything in there. And now you trying to pretend you, you concerned about my health? You promoting the LGBT, which is the quickest way for a man to get dead? And you gonna tell me you care? Part one. Look at somebody and say overcoming offenses. So we gotta overcome it. We gotta clean. We got. Look at somebody and say wipe it clean. We gotta start 2021 with a clean slate. That means I'm not carrying over no bitterness. I'm not carrying over any pain. I'm not carrying hatred. I'm not thinking about the devil like that in 2021. So I got to make sure God cleans my heart. I'm not carrying unforgiveness into this new year. I got, look, somebody say, let them go. I got to let folks go out of my heart because God needs all of my heart in 2021. I have to yield all of me if I'm going to make it through. So I can't be carrying stuff and hatred and bitterness and all of the stuff that's making me drink and smoke and fornicate. Because that's what it does. Ain't nobody out there just being bad. They're being bad because there's something in their heart. It's a heart issue. And until you deal with the heart, you can't help them. You can't knock whiskey out of a wino's hand. But stop drinking. Okay. As soon as you turn the corner. You can't because something is wrong with his what? Something's in his heart that needs to be fixed. You fix what's in your heart, you won't crave a substance to take you into another dimension. Because you hate the dimension that you're in. You hate your existence here. So you're trying to escape with a substance. 
God wants you to deal with that, whatever it is in your heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. Part one, overcoming offenses. An offense can drastically hinder a person's life. They no longer live God's way, but rather fight to avenge themselves in everything they do. Did you know that? So when you have unforgiveness in your heart, your, your whole life is planned by, around you avenging yourself. That's what it is. All your decisions. You can't do what God say if it gets in the way of you being who you feel you should be to show folks who you should be no matter what they said and no matter what they did to you. I got to drive this. I got to live in this house. I got to wear these clothes. I got to do this and that to prove to other people. Why? Because there's something in your heart. There's unforgiveness. There's an offense in your heart and you're trying to show or prove you're better than what somebody either said or how they treated you. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth. Yeah. So your whole life shifts when an offense is in your heart. That's why the devil want to get one in you. If he can get one in you, your whole life shifts. Now, you're not even praying for the betterment of anyone but yourself. You're not even seeking God unless you can get something out of it. You give it just to get it back. Proverbs 26 and 21, are, as coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. A person that has something in them, they're going to continue to kindle strife. Just like coals are to burning coals. If you put a regular coal on a burning coal, what's going to happen to it? It's going to catch fire. That's how you are. So that's why folk don't like you because whenever you come around, whatever's in your heart They'll just say mess. Mess in your heart. You gonna, it's going to put mess on other folks. Do you know you can put your offense in someone else? You can put it in someone else and have them mad like you. And they ain't even go through what you went through. That's why I tell these folks, don't be talking to your mama and your daddy about your husband and your wife. Oh, we owe something now. Head in the bosom of your mama telling her, oh, you're my wife, I wish I would. I told you not to marry her. Didn't I tell you? Don't, don't, don't. You done took your fence and put it in your mama. Now when you make up with your wife and bring her around your mama, your mama still. <laughs> telling your dad, oh, he won't treat me right. He won't see you want me to come fight him. Well, now, nah, dad, you might get whooped. You kind of old. <laughs> but you don't be going to them because when you rectify it and forgive, they still look at bitter because you put your offense in someone. Amen. Amen. I'm so grown. I ain't let nobody change my mind about somebody. Ooh, I need a hand clap for that. Ain't nobody finna come and just, ooh, you, you, you. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's right. Oh, man, I don't like him no more. Man, you crazy. Put your offense in somebody else. Like a coal to a burning coal. Somebody set you next to the devil and the devil got on you. Can I keep preaching? When a person is hurt, they usually change how they feel about themselves. It causes them to view themselves as victim, as a victim instead of a victor. This removes their compassion toward others. So if you see yourself as a victim, you don't have compassion for anyone. You want all the compassion. You want all the attention because you see yourself as a victim. You can't help another victim if you see yourself as a victim. So if your life becomes about you, your prayers become about you. Do you think God wants you to get on your knees and pray about you all the time? So when you let folks, when you let this hurt, when you let it fester inside of you, you become a victim. And usually, especially men in this state, they just become narcissists. 
where the whole world revolves around them. And they don't care what others think at all. I talked about that in the part 13. This removes their compassion toward others. Proverbs 29 and 22. An angry man does what? Stirreth up strife and a furious man stays in sin. Anybody angry all the time is in sin. You don't have the peace of God on your life, then how do you have freedom from sin? Can I keep going? Amen. You can't have an I don't care attitude and you're supposed to be saved and sanctified. You need to care. Amen. Somebody cared about you in your raggedy state. Somebody cared enough to keep praying for you. When you rejected God and acting a fool, somebody was praying for you. So how are you going to turn folks off? And I don't care about them. I don't care nothing. I don't care. Amen. Offenses take the place of the Holy Spirit. So anybody carrying an offense, you ain't carrying the Holy Ghost. You don't have to agree with me. Both of them can't be there. They contradict each other. They oppose each other. Yeah, one of them makes you a demon, act like a demon, and the other makes you act like God. They can't be in the same Bitter and sweet can't come from the same fountain. So when you carry in offenses and unforgiveness, it takes the place of the Holy Spirit. He is supposed, the Holy Spirit is supposed to lead and guide us. But when we harbor malice and unforgiveness, we are led by revenge and self-preservation instead of by the Spirit of God. So when you harbor it, you're led by it. And that's what you make your decisions based on. God tells you, don't, no, you know, been telling you don't go that way, don't go that way. But you want to avenge yourself, so you go the other way. And, you know, people like that, they get on my nerves because they always want somebody to come and pray them out of it. I'm like, bro, you should have listened to the Lord. Some stuff you need to go through just because you didn't listen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I had a brother... Email me the other day, oh, brother, you know, I'm going to be in town. You think I can stop by and you cast these demons out of me? No. No. I'm free Tuesday. But brother, I'm not. Not for that. I'm just going to casually come by. Have you been listening to the podcast? Have you been watching the videos? Have you been reading the word? Have you done any of that? Don't you walk in here with some fresh raw meat. I mean, some demons that ain't been even challenged. Boy, you better get away from me. <laughs> Keep me up for three, four days trying to cast that out. Well, in the Bible, they just walked up on people. Well, they didn't have Bibles in the Bible. <laughs> Saint the Bible days. Hey, Amen. Me and the heroes ain't walking the street. Walking 26. <laughs> Running up on folks and casting stuff out there. There's no need for that now when you can get into a fellowship and be discipled into the kingdom. That's what we're here for. To be discipled into the kingdom. People making the choice to not go. I ain't fooling with you if you making the choice to not go. How do you sit back and just decide I'm not going to church? But then when your head is spinning around, you call it the pastor. How oh, y'all need to get out the four walls? Well, the Bible didn't say that. I like the four walls. It protects me from people like y'all. Some old YouTube foolishness you done got into. You got a YouTube doctrine. I love these four walls. It's protective. What's wrong with four walls? I'll go ye therefore and teach. <laughs> Brother, I can do that on the internet. I'm doing that right now. This is going to get uploaded and it's going to go therefore. <laughs> People crazy.
Galatians 5 and 6. This I say unto thee, walk in the what? See, and that's, that's my thing. Before we deal with what that demon did to you, brother, have you been walking in the spirit? The Bible said if you walk in the spirit, you will not what? Fulfill the what? I got a porn problem. Brother, what do you want me to do? You ain't walking in the spirit. Every time I try to read the word, I, my eyes and I, then you, there's no hope for you. What do you want me to do, bro? I have to get the word. I have to ask God to help me. I got to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh or I'm going to get in trouble. That's me. I don't know about you. Maybe you can fulfill the lust of the flesh and not get in no trouble. I get in trouble when I do it. So that means I got to do what? I got to walk in the spirit. He said, I walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Can I keep going? When we hold on to what people have done to us, we are letting go of what God can do for us. When we hold on to what people have done to us, we are letting go of what God can do for us. You're putting it in God's way because you're worried about what somebody did to you. You should think that hard about what you've done to people. Why, you, why do people think so hard about what somebody did to them and they keep doing stuff to people? That's what I tell men all the time. Oh, my gosh, this is a reconciliation with the father ministry right here. I mean, we got grown men in here that changed their last name to their father's name in here because they had to forgive him. And you have to forgive him because look at what you've been doing. How are you going to point the finger at him and you've been out here wilding and acting a fool and you can't blame him? You made those decisions. He didn't call you and tell you to be a fool. Oh, but the lack of his involvement in my... Boy, you've been watching too much YouTube. Get somewhere and forgive him and do right by your family. Won't you treat people right? You can't treat people right because you're living off the hate that you have for him. That's what an offense does. It'll totally change the way you see life and treat people. You end up an old bum nobody want to be around. In church. You know there's bums in church don't nobody want to be around. Why you come, man? Did you enjoy the service? It was all right. You enjoy the message? Yeah, I mean, I mean what's wrong, man? You all right? No, come man. Life, man. Life. Life. Dude, you 60. Is this the way you going out? It's going to end just like this? You 60 with a bottle of gin in your hand, in your pocket, bringing the flask to church, in the suit jacket. <laughs> Making it yourself. <laughs> Got the shine in your pocket, bruh. Yeah, an old half a joint. In your shirt pocket because you can't afford weed. <laughs> you smoking spices in the cabin. <laughs> Old grandmama's cooking stuff. <laughs> you are <laughs> got the oregano leaves. Brother! How you going to smoke something that costs money? <laughs> and you don't have none. <laughs> shaking paprika and coming in some paper and rolling it. When we hold on to what people have done to us, we are letting go of what God can do for us. So your whole life is crippled just because you're holding on to what somebody did to you. He is not going to bless us if we are cursing others. So you've just disabled your blessing. 
by wishing harm on somebody else. Wanting to see somebody fail. Do you know if you sit around wanting to see somebody fail, guess who's failing? That's why I sit around. I want to see folks blessed. You know why? So I can be what? Blessed. Why would I sit and wish harm on somebody? Oh, angry, ugly spirit sitting around wanting something bad to happen and you think it's not going to happen to you? You don't know how that works? Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also what? Be not deceived. Don't you be fooled. God will not be mocked for whatsoever. All of it. You're going to pay for all of it. Why would you sit around and do that? That's costing you your life to take somebody's life down. Man, and whatever they did ain't worth that. James 3 and 10, out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brother, these things ought not to be so. He's not giving you an option. He said that shouldn't be able to happen. So something is wrong here. There's something else in you. You think it's the Holy Ghost. It's a ghost, but it's not holy. You don't operate in that spirit field with the Holy Ghost. Backbiting and talking about folks and trying to, that ain't the Holy Unforgiveness, that's not the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not saying we all are perfect. We got, you got to rebuke some thoughts now. Oh, yo, 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 you got to rebuke some thoughts. I, now, I have some thoughts and I have some weapons. And sometimes my thoughts and those weapons kind of come together. And that's when I have to call on the Holy Ghost. L Lord, I'm in the flesh right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying in my mind, you start visualizing folk that done done your own. Amen. And then all of a sudden in your mind, you see their head chopped off. And a lot of blood and everywhere. It's like Kill Bill. It's just shooting out in your mind. That's in your mind. And you just wonder, you know, and then you have to come on back, Lord. Lord! Oh! And then God gonna tell you, well, you shouldn't have been watching that movie like that. You binge watched it. See, folk be watching stuff and you ain't watching it for the entertainment. Movies don't even be that good. You wishing you was Beatrice. That's me. You a man wishing you was her. Yeah, watching all these superhero movies and stuff. You wish you was Thanos. When I snap my finger, it's only one person that's going to disappear <laughs> and turn to dust. I don't need to do half the population. Just one. Just one. But that's in your mind. I mean, we all go through that. Am I? Y'all gonna just leave me hanging like this? You thought this yesterday. You was praying that somebody in 2020 wouldn't see 2021. Lord, let them catch COVID and die in the name of Jesus. I don't even believe it exists, but I want it to exist for them. Let them take the vaccine, the Moderna and the FISA. Load them up. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Something wrong with you. The power of the Holy Ghost is a loving power. Look at somebody say it's a loving power. A loving power that works through our love and concern for others. So if you don't have love and concern for others, you're not filled with the Spirit. I mean, I'll be praying and God don't feel me. I just be wanting to be filled. I mean, you be, wanting to, you, you be wanting the day of Pentecost to happen, and the day of Pentecost already happened. So ain't no, there's no need for cloven tongues of fire, because that already happened. It was the first time it came. So there were things that happened that were significant with the first time that the Spirit came on earth. There was tongues of fire. There was a rushing mighty wind. You listening for the sound. I, I, I believe I was filled if I heard the wishing sound. Yeah, you want that to happen. And all you got to do is live right and believe that you're filled. Believe that you're filled with the Spirit. And watch the Spirit overtake you. 
Yeah, if you yielding and believing. That's where the love and concern from others come from. If you still acting the way you acted before you got saved, what are you saved from? Having ill feelings about a person grieves the spirit of God and quenches his power. When you have ill feelings about people, the Holy Ghost has left the building. You quench the spirit. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 4 and 29 tells us, let no, how much, how much? No corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. What you doing cussing and you a Christian? You save and you cussing. That's an evil communication. I mean, they just words. I mean, words are words. See, semantics and linguistics and words. You done got on YouTube again, haven't you? They ain't just words. They rate them words. They won't even let you watch certain shows if you say certain things. Obviously, if the world sees something offensive and have given ratings for it, something's wrong with the words. And I can't tell you how many demons I've cast out with that kind of language. That's how demons talk. But what if you're real mad, Pastor? Like you, your wife, like she make you real mad. Get your man card back. And why are you cussing at your wife? You cussing at yourself. Ooh, the hand claps. Just, just stop. Stop clapping. Just stop clapping if you looking at your wife. Looking at the dude sitting over there. Go on and clap. Clap for me. Clap for me. If you can use one of my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Quit. Look at somebody say, quit cussing. Quit cussing when you're awake. Quit cussing in your sleep. You know you can control your sleep. You can ask the Holy Ghost, God, I need you in my dreams. The devil's catching me vulnerable while I'm sleeping. So, God, I need you to come in the night. You don't need to be fighting demons every night and monsters chasing you. And you dreaming, oh, all this darkness. And you just need to wake up and the pillar all across the room. <laughs> Sheets cut up. What was going on? Freddy Krueger was in your bed. You had the nightmare on Elm Street. Stuff just sliced up. Wife just bleeding. You just, ah, ah. You know how it is when you're dreaming. Am I hollering? I feel like I'm hollering, but ain't nothing coming out. <laughs> See, everybody can relate to that. You know that noisy yeah, air, that means you in between two rims. I need to get from in between. I need to get from the... Hey, I don't want to be in the upside down. Get me out of here. Yeah. The thing is backwards. Yeah. Hey, get me out of here, Lord. Oh, wow. Stranger things. <laughs> Y'all know you know. And so you have to pray and ask God to protect you in your dreams. That's your mind. Look, somebody said that's your mind. That's your mind. That's your subconscious stream. Whatever they want to call it in new age, you, that belongs to you. So you should be in control with it. Don't let your human spirit connect with something in your sleep. The devil will try to use that time because you're vulnerable, you're vulnerable at that time. So you need to pray for protection in your sleep. If you cussing folks out in your dream and having sex and you're doing all this junk in your dream, you sinning. See? They ain't ready for that message. That's our, that's our era, man, full right there. You in sin. You dream in sin. Well, Lord, I'm not responsible for what happens once I go to sleep. Yes, you. Yes, you. You better be.
Man, I'm preaching today, boy. Ephesians 4, 29, let no communal... Let no corrupt communication proceed out your mouth. And don't you just stop cussing. Stop your music from cussing. Why is your music cussing? That's you cussing. Watching stuff and turning the subtitles on so you can read along and read the cuss words. I needed to let that out. You cussing. Your music is cussing and butt shaking. You're responsible for that. Why are you filling yourself up with that evil? And they can't sleep at night. Oh, pastor, I ain't slept in two or three days. I don't know what's going on. What you been listening to? Uh, Erica Badu, I mean, but, you know, she believe in God. What? Oh, I'm going to finish this. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of what? Edify it. That it may what? Minister grace to who? the hearers and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption you can't have good things happen to you while wishing bad things on others amen that needs to be on veggie tales sesame street that's so elementary you wishing bad things on others and wondering why you're not blessed You can't love God but wish bad things on people because of what they did to you. 1 John 4 and 20, if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a what? A liar. It's not true. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God who he hath not seen? Man, this is plain and simple. Overcoming offenses takes real forgiveness. How many of you know that? Yeah, when it's down in there, down in the gullet. Do humans have gullets? Amen. Down in your gizzard. Do we have gizzards? Why does a chicken have a gizzard and we don't have one? What does he do with it? What is the gizzard for? I've never looked it up. I eat them. Gizzards. Man, you put the right batter around it. And now you're going to lose a couple of teeth. Because it takes lots of minutes, five minutes of gizzard, to chew that thing down. You know why I think it's hard to chew it down, Gerard? Because it's a digestive particle. It's supposed to be doing that in the belly of the chicken. You trying to digest the digester. <laughs> that was too logical, what it is. You try to digest the digest. That's why you got to chew it for 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, but when I cook mine, they be soft. I cook them three days. <laughs> That's too much time on a 10 cent gizzard. You done use $75 worth of electricity on a 10 cent gizzard. You can find gizzards at the bottom of your freezer. There's some right now. You bought them and forgot they were so cheap. Overcoming offenses takes... <laughs> oh okay. Everybody hungry now. I know what I'm going to be eating while the Cowboys are playing. <laughs> I'm going to be pulling... Chicken Express sell gizzards? Oh. oh! Now don't be eating all them gizzards and then talking about COVID. Oh, Pastor. <laughs> it's COVID. And you had a 30 piece. That took eight hours to chew. <laughs> okay, let me. Let me get back into this. <laughs> this is some ignorant mess, ain't it, Greg? Just ignorant. You sit there like, why this boy is ignorant? <laughs> Overcoming offenses takes real forgiveness. You have to truly forgive the person that hurt you. Look at somebody say, you have to truly hurt, uh, forgive the person that hurt you. 
And somebody wanted to stick with that, hurt the person. That hurt you. No, I know, no, no, no. I was, there was no Freudian slip. I mean that, Herbert. No. No, you have to truly forgive the person that hurts you. The Bible says in Mark 11 and 25, and when you stand praying, do what? If you forgive, if you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may do what? Forgive you your trespass. So this tells us that there has to be a precursor for your prayer to even be heard and received by God. So if, God, if you're not forgiving your brother, God ain't forgiving you, so that means he's not listening to you. But, I, but that song said he hears a sinner's prayer. You quoting songs? People do that. No, oh, man, no, oh, man. You wrong. Because that song said. <laughs> Bruh, that ain't in the Bible, Doc. If you a sinner in your sin, why would God listen to you? You better be praying a prayer of forgiveness. Amen. But you got to. That's what he says. Stand praying, forgive, so that he'll listen to you and forgive you. Amen? This may take time because the more time you spend investing in payback, revenge, malice, or hatred against the person, the more deeply rooted your disdain for them will be. So if it's been years you was hating somebody or whatever, you forgive them, you talk to them, and then you try to move on, feelings are going to still come back. You're going to be like, man, I thought I forgave him. Why am I feeling like this? It was deeply rooted. It's going to take some time of healing. You got to heal. Man, you know how long you hated that person? Or do you know how, much you, how bad you did somebody? It's going to take time. It's going to take time for it to heal. You've been thinking dirty thoughts, bad thoughts. You've been wishing bad on them for a long time. Even did stuff to them. So it's going to take time. Look, somebody say it's going to take time. And we're human beings. So as the word comes, we obey the word and we walk in it. Amen? Amen. And so maybe the word didn't come to you. Maybe you didn't know and you spent some time out there. Well, now it's time to give it to God, but... It's not going to happen overnight in every case. It may take some time. It may take some work. It may take some effort. You're going to have to keep filling yourself with the word of God to change the way you think. Amen. Amen. If you've been thinking crazy for 20 years, don't come in here, oh, just get knocked out, and then go home and think everything's okay. You better get the, you, it's going to take a lot to rebuke them thoughts. They all coming back. Hebrews 12 and 15, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of what? Bitterness springing up trouble you. Because once that offense starts troubling you, what is it going to do? Many are going to be what? Defiled by it. Sad. The Holy Ghost searches the heart and the deep things of our very being. When we seek after him, our true motives, issues, and offense are what? Exposed so that we can what? So that we can reconcile them. So because the Holy Ghost searches the heart and the deep things of the heart, we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost so that we can get rid of the things that are deeply seated in us. Amen? You may enjoy the power of God moving in the service and you gave your life to the Lord and all of that. Now it's time to go deeper. And when I say go deeper, I'm not talking about you go deeper by looking at a bunch of YouTube videos. I'm saying it's time to allow the power of God to go deeper and search the things in the heart so he can show you what is motivating you to act a fool. What's motivating you to slip and fall at that time every year? You're doing good for a little while. I'm doing good. I'm, Lord, I mean, God just helped me. I ain't looked at nothing bad on the computer. And that lasts for three or four months, then you're looking again. There's something in you God needs to show you what that is for you to be delivered from it. But that takes you going, allowing him to go deeper. First Corinthians 2 and 10, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches what? How much is all? The spirit searches all things, yea, the what? Deep things. Of God. Summary! 
Oh, this message blessed me. Amen. A major function of the Holy Ghost is to help us pray. This is why you need to be filled so it can help you pray. We talked about that in the New Year's service. Help us to pray. When we do not know what to pray, the Spirit can give us what to say. Amen. You ever just sat there and waited? Pray until you pray. Sit there and wait. Well, I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus will. All right. <laughs> now, sit there and wait and let the spirit reveal. Man, when you do that, in a little while, things will start coming to your mind. Words will start coming. Then you start, you get to the place. Now, this is when you really got there, where you're saying things and listening to yourself. And you're like, whoa. Oh, <laughs> 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 you know what I'm talking about here? It's that, I call it the sweet spot. See, that's that sweet spot. You just talking and you know you praying regularly and all of a sudden you listening to yourself. You hear God just funneling things through you. God is just using you as an instrument. He's playing you with the power of the spirit. And it's just like, oh, and then you don't ever want to get up from there. You lose time right there. Some folks can't clap because that ain't happened because you don't spend enough time. How you going to spend five hours on call of duty and you can't spend time before the Lord? Uh-oh, I just stepped on something. Amen. Amen. I mean, how many folks can you kill? How many guns and weapons are you going to use, bruh? I mean, you in all the ships and the, uh, just all the, the helicopters and you... Yeah, yeah, you can play that for hours, but can't give God any time. And then wonder why your life is at a standstill. Major function of the Holy Ghost is to help us pray. When we do not know what to pray, the Spirit can give us what to say. In overcoming offenses, you must use the power of God to pray for those. Ooh, ooh, ah. Oh, that's them groanings that the Bible talks. You gotta, you gotta pray for those. I can't even say it. <laughs> I'm just playing. You gotta pray for those that offended you. Look at somebody say you have to pray for those. You have to pray for those that what? Offended you. It's the only way you're going to overcome the offense is if you pray for those. That's the deep things. You can't even see yourself doing it. So you know that's going to take the spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. Amen. However... You don't pray against them. You pray that they will be forgiven by God for what they are doing or have done. Jesus was on the cross, perishing, and he looked at the folks that put him up there and said what? God, Father, what? Forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's your example. Father, forgive them. Amen. You want to put people on the cross. And that's not God. Father, forgive them. You pray that just as God has forgiven you for your sins, they can be forgiven for theirs. You pray that whatever hurt they experience that caused them to hurt you will be forgiven so they will not carry offenses. You carry an offense and God has commanded you to pray for someone else's offense. Because when you pray and rebuke their offense, it's going to make yours drop off. When you're able to pray for somebody, that means you've forgiven them. Can't hate them and pray for them. That's impossible. Now you can say words and help them, Lord. Jesus, I mean, I mean. Whenever you say I mean, God just... 
Yeah, you saying I mean to the one that knows exactly what you mean. <laughs> That's not going to work. Amen. Just as you are letting go of them, because we're letting go of them. Look at somebody say, I'm letting it go. Just as you are letting go of them, they will be able to let go of whatever is driving their behavior. This is what you pray. Compassion is the key, though. When you are filled with the Spirit, you are filled with compassion toward others. So if you don't have compassion toward others, you're not what? Oh, they didn't want to say that. No, you're not filled with the Spirit because if you're filled with the Spirit, you feel with what? You're filled with Jesus. That means you're filled with ultimate compassion. Ooh, these raggedy first of the year claps. A person that maliciously attacks and deceitfully destroys others is filled with the devil and not of God. We know that, right? So you cannot lash out, fight against, or attempt to pay back a person as a believer. You will go to hell for that. Believers pray for people. They pray for people. They don't just say, I'm going to pray for you and don't pray. True believers pray for people. You see your brother stumbling, you see him in trouble, whatever, you pray for him. Amen. Amen. You don't talk about him and run and tell it and tell somebody else and try to, you pray for them. You know they under attack, you pray for them. Amen. Amen. When the devil attacked me, I tell the Lord, I don't want nobody in this church that's not praying for me. You can't pray for me. You don't love me. You need to go. Amen. Amen. Get out of here if you ain't going to pray for me. I don't need you to talk about me. And I'm praying for you and your raggedy face popping up in my prayers. Pray for him. Oh, Lord. Not that one. You know what he's been doing. Pray for him. Because I'm supposed to watch for your soul. So you cannot lash out, fight against. You will go to hell for that. Believers pray for people, believe God for forgiveness, and do what? Move on. You must move. Look at somebody say, you must move on. 20, look at somebody say, 20 and 21. You must move on. Must move on. That record is played on that side. See, y'all too young to know about that. It's played on that side, side A. You got to get the record, flip it over for side B. It's B time. The beauty of praying for a person. Oh, please listen to this. This is the most important part. The beauty of praying for a person instead of retaliation is that you can have hope that they will change and do what? Treat you better. So you're in the house. Your husband ain't treating you right because he got an offense, something wrong with him, whatever. He just ain't treating you right. Why would you keep arguing and fighting and going against him and picking up the phone and telling busybodies what he's doing? If you pray for him, your house will be better because he's going to treat you better if you pray for him. If you pray for him. I've been praying for him. Not looking like that. I can look at your face and tell something wrong with the way you've been praying. You can't pray and fuss at him at the same time. Pray and emasculate him at the same time. So he'll treat you better. Folks will treat you better. I'd rather pray for somebody acting demonic so they'll treat me better. Let me pray for them that they get saved and change. If they remain in your life or in your family, you should desire that they change. They're in your family, you got to see them. Why are you fist fighting all the time? Just boxing every time you see them. Hey, girl. What the, what? Won't you pray for them so that the next Thanksgiving, potato salad won't be all on the wall. <laughs> pray for them. If they have to remain in your life, you want them to stop their sinful behavior, right? That's why you have an offense. You have an offense because they hurt you. They did, they did you wrong, right? So you don't want them to do that no more, right? 
Look at somebody and say, pray for them then. Pray for them. You want them to stop their sinful behavior, so you pray that God will change them, save them, or fill them with the Spirit so they will what? Treat others better. You're in the others. You're included in that. We should not want anyone to go to hell, especially for what they did to us. Always remember, always remember this. The Bible says you'll know them by their fruit, right? If somebody just, if rotten fruit is around somebody, then you know them. You know they rotten. Always remember that true believers do what? Forgive, and only true believers will what? See Jesus. Overcome unforgiveness and all offenses right away. So you will be in good standing with Jesus when he returns. Amen. Amen. Colossians 3 and 12. Put on therefore as the elect of God. How many of you are elect of God? <laughs> you, if you ain't elect of God, you ain't going to see him. Put on therefore as the elect of God. Holy and beloved. Bowels of what? Mercy. Mercy kindness. Hum Ooh, hey, that's the one that's... This is why you can't give up the offense because you can't humble yourself. Too much pride. Humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a oh, -ee. Mm. if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, what are you supposed to do? So also do ye. And above all these things, put on what? Charity. Charity. That's love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Amen? Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. Amen. Amen. Old fences got to go. Amen. Now, I'm... A, the reason why I didn't want that podium here is because we're going to do all to call, old school style. And we're going to leave that offense here, and we're not taking it nowhere. So if there's an offense in your heart toward anyone, any, just come on up, and we'll just, we'll just stand in this area. And we got room. We got a big wide aisle there. I need to let this go. Oh, boy, I don't know who that was. I was like, don't, don't come up here. Go. Okay. <laughs> but just come on up. Come on. Do we have people in the overflow? Okay, the people in the overflow can come. Let them, let them out. Y'all come on, whoever it is. I knew he was going to need room. Amen. Come on up. Come on up. You'll be all right. Amen. You'll be all right. You ain't catching nothing in here. Amen. We believe in the power of God. The very reason you on this altar is because you believe in God's power. Amen. So the same power is the healing power. Amen. I caught something and I had it for a couple of days and I had my taste and my smell and all that, so, but I was sick. I had something, and you know what it was? G. Craig needed to sit down. I need to get somewhere and sit down, and that turned into a month of me sitting down because he just had to get my attention. So it didn't have nothing to do with the, the, the pandemic or nothing. I just needed to get somewhere and sit down. I was tired. Amen? So don't be afraid of everything. God got you. He's going to protect you. Yeah, Y'all come in. All right, come on. Come on. Whoever else. Amen. And we're going to leave offenses here. Tired of looking at somebody and getting upset. Tired of thinking of something and getting upset. Tired of worrying about something that's going on somewhere that I'm mad at. Sitting up thinking about somebody that has moved on. They've moved on and are doing good. And I'm sitting up here still trying to figure out and hoping. I'm sitting here hoping something bad happens and God does something to them because of what they did to me. That's got to go. That's got to go, whether it's a mother, father, relative, friend, whether it's a former pastor, whether it's a former church, it's church hurt, whatever it is that has to go because that is a nest for demons. It's a demonic nest, and all kinds of things will settle and lay eggs in it and mess your life up, and you'll never be who God called you to be. You know some folk die never becoming who God wanted them to become? That's possible, but that ain't going to happen to any of us. Amen? Amen, because we're hearing the word. We're letting the word change us, and we're going to abide in what we're hearing, and we're going to trust God to get this junk out of us. So just bow your heads, everyone. Bow your heads. You can lift your hands if you want. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for all of these people that love you. 
These are people that love you. They trust you. In this last day, in this last hour, they still have faith. The news told them something. The social media is telling them something. Witchcraft, witches, everybody's telling them it's fake. They're telling them that the book is the white man's Bible. It's telling them that their black skin is worthy of praise and honor. God, they're hearing all of this foolishness, and yet they still believe the truth. They're in here. These are your people that have selected to believe the truth. True, adamant believers believing and adamant about what they believe. They're not going to let the world change them. They're not going to let the world uh, uh, confuse them. They're not going to let the world persuade them. God, these people are rock solid in believing and trusting in you. And because of that foundation, God, I pray right now that any offense, anything that's in their heart, something that they may not even be aware of, something that they're fully aware of, whatever it is, Father God, we break it right now, we bind it right now, and we cast it to the ground. Father God, that they will not have to contend with this anymore, not in 2020, uh, 2021, God, not in 2021. Let this drop off of them right now in the name of Jesus, Father. Reveal it to them. Remove it, pry it out, pull it out. Father God, search the deep things of their heart so this can be removed from them. Father God, so that it can be taken away from them and left behind them. Father God, that person opened the door, paved the way for them to even reconcile if reconciliation is needed. And in some cases, Father God, just let them repent. Let them just send a, a text message or an email, whatever they need to do, Father God, to get this off them so that they can be free to worship you and free to trust you and most importantly, free to love their fellow man. We don't want to be hypocrites in here, God. We don't want to say one thing and do another. We don't want to profess one thing and live another way. Father God, we want to be true to you. We want to live for you. We want to be who we say. So, Father, I pray right now that every offense be dropped off. Every offense be bound right now and cast away. Any ill feeling, Father God, anything that's in their hearts that shouldn't be, remove it right now so they don't contend with the same sins every year. So they don't go through that season of darkness where darkness just clouds their vision and comes over their home and just every year at a certain time. Father God, we rebuke all of that right now by the power of God. And believe that you are lifting these offenses off right now. You're showing them. You're giving them even words right now. You're giving them methods right now to be able to rectify, to deal with it. How to pray about it. And Father, give them the power of your Holy Ghost. So they can pray for the person that offended them. So they can pray for the person they feel did them wrong. And Father, reveal it to them by your Spirit the way. Father God, to be free from this. And we trust you. We believe in you. We love you. And we want more of you this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on and give God praise. Amen. Now listen, y'all. This is, for 90% of y'all, this is a process. Okay, so today was the day when it came uncorked, uh, un, you know. But from here, you got to follow the Spirit of God to know how to deal with, with it as it comes. God's going to bring restitution, but you got to seek him to find the pathway to it. Amen? Don't use your own emotions, because your emotions are going to lie to you. That's what they do. But let the Spirit of God lead you so you can get these things resolved, so your heart can be clean before him. Amen? Amen.